President Obama wins re-election with the public clearly tired of the impasse in Washington. But are Republicans ready to move past the battle to bipartisanship? With me today are Republican analyst Bill Spadia and Democratic analyst Yohuru Williams. And gentlemen, let me ask you both, politicians, uh, are they listening to the public this time around? You know, I, I think they are in this sense, Brian, that it's beyond bipartisanship. It's now about results. You've still got high unemployment, high debt, high gas prices. The economy is still in the same shambles it was in before the election. I think you can point to President Obama's re-election very close, uh, you know, relatively close. When you look at the electoral map out there and you turn, you know, a couple dozen counties out there and the election goes the other way, uh, I think that the president won re-election on likability. I don't know that he necessarily won wanted on his plan for the economy because when you drill down the Republicans kept the house and when you look at some of the key states around the country Ohio Virginia Florida uh, even Colorado Iowa their economies are relatively strong and in some of those states you've got aggressive Republican governors that have held the line on taxes held the line on spending and worked across the aisle but bipartisanship has to equal results mm -hmm. to get those numbers going in the right direction well let me ask you that question on, on the other side of that line hero because you have the Democrats winning a couple of additional seats in the House. Absolutely. Uh, actually, a couple of states that the Republicans had expected to win, they didn't. So again, it's a close election, but the president comes in now with perhaps a little more political uh, power, shall we say, or uh, some standing to make things work. Will Republicans go along with it? He certainly does come in with more power, and I think there are two things right now that make cooperation really crucial. First is the fiscal cliff, and we had a meeting last week that uh, President Obama held at the White House where Harry Reid, uh, uh, Boehner was there, Nancy Pelosi, and the results from that conversation, those conversations were, were, were very positive. So the fiscal cliff is going to force some cooperation. Um, and of course, the damage from Superstorm Sandy, as we saw here in New Jersey, mm -hmm. that forced a uh, Republican governor to deal with the president. And Unfortunately, it's situations like this. Unfortunately, it's crisis management, I think, yeah. often that produces bipartisanship, not the um, will of the American people to have people or political parties that really want to deal with issues in a way that makes sense. Well, in that sense, you're right. I mean, it was results oriented. You Absolutely. know, when we look at the reason that Governor Christie had to partner with President Obama is, look, he needed the help. The federal government had to come in. There was a lot of money that needed to be spent. There was certainly a call for FEMA to come in. I mean, in terms of just simple things, fuel and generators and power and uh, and, and bottled water. So, you know, shelter for folks that were displaced and lost their homes. So in that sense, at the end of the day, it's not about politics, it's about results. And right. I think you can well, apply well, that well, to the economy. Well, let me ask you on that, on that yeah. very note, the Republicans have a chance now to perhaps regain some, some stature with the voters to say, we're interested in those results. Yeah. But they've come out of the election jumping on the Benghazi thing instead of, we haven't heard anything about the economy. Well, I, you know, I, I think at, when you talk about Benghazi, this was a colossal failure when we look at the president's foreign policy. I mean, just by, the def, by definition, we lost four brave Americans. We lost an ambassador. So when you look at that, there, the confusion on what was said in these intelligence reports when you had Susan Rice out there talking about this being a politically motivated protest, when it turns out that General Petraeus said at the very beginning, look, we knew this was a terrorist attack. So I, but he also I think said that he was the tell reason. Them. He also said he didn't Absolutely. reveal that information. It seems to me that Susan Rice just went a little too far, and I think it's given the Republicans reason to say, look, we've got to pause here, because is this the right person? I would say, really, the, the, uh, the burden here is on the president, because he's the one floating her name as the next Secretary of State. Right. But I think part of the problem here is that it has become a partisan battle over who will succeed Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State. And unfortunately, what's lost in this is exactly what Bill suggested, the fact that three people in Ambassador Stevens lost their lives in this attack. I don't believe the president is responsible, though, however. I, I believe that ultimately the Republicans are upset because foreign policy is traditionally in their wheelhouse. This is the arena where they've been dominant, where they've been able to make the case consistently that the Democrats have been not prepared, don't present the best options for the United States. And if it is a colossal failure, um, it's a colossal failure that's being painted in partisan terms. I don't think that any way you can say that this is a failure of the Obama administration as much as a reflection of the sad state of affairs that we live in today, where global terrorism is simply a reality. Let me ask you guys both. Are you surprised at all that after the election, here we are mid-November, this fiscal cliff supposedly hits us at the end of December, and we are not talking about 
the economy. We're, the, weeks we're out. talking about yeah, we're just weeks out. What yeah. we're talking about over what's going on overseas has has mm -hmm. I mean, let me as you watch these yeah. things, let me ask you both your reaction to that and the fact that we're not talking about what the voters said we ought to be talking about. Well, the, you know, the, the voters, it, it's, uh, I don't know that it was a consistent message from the voters in this sense that you had this really opposite results from the fact that the Congress stayed Republican and the Republicans have really stayed on message in terms of low taxes, in terms of helping small business. And the president, uh, to his credit, stayed on message in terms of implementing the national health care plan. And I, I think that there are so many issues out there that many people, you look at Ohio as an example, big swing state. You know, the folks in Ohio, from their perspective, 6.7% unemployment. Uh, in their perspective, uh, the economy is pretty good, and they've got a good governor, and I think that's one of the reasons why you see some of the issues jumping around. It isn't affecting everybody. Mm -hmm. One of the dangers of this, however, is that if they do not take proactive measures to deal with this problem, that this is going to be a long, slow, painful uh, process that's going to play out if this $500 billion in, in cuts um, actually kicks in. So this fiscal cliff is a pretty significant benchmark. And what I hope, and I'm sure Bill would agree with me here, is that we don't get a stopgap measure. What we actually get is some concrete movement on this issue um, that is long term. As long as we don't do long term damage. And I think when, when you see the debate going on about taxes in particular, you know, the Republicans have got to get ahead of this issue as to why they're opposing taxes on the so called millionaires, the 250,000 plus. You know, they've got to really bring it back to small business. And I think that's what's working when you look at what Governor Kasich did in Ohio. What Governor Christie is pushing for in New Jersey, uh, Governor McDonnell in Virginia, same thing, that you got to apply the tax relief across the board because you've got to create jobs. And I think the voters will respond very positively to that. Uh, and we're already starting to see it. I mean, they are talking. Even Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid the other day said that they were confident that we were getting toward a solution. So I, I think we're going to see one very soon. Well, they said they were considering revenue. Uh, the extent of that, we just don't know. But uh, there seems to be some coming together of the two sides. Who's going to blink first? Or who has to blink first? Is it on the Republicans? Because of their, they're coming out of the election this, the way they have? No, I think uh, if this, if the president came into re-election with a solid mandate in a landslide, uh, I think it's a very different conversation. I, I think that if if the Republicans had lost more House seats, they only lost a handful. And let's face it, uh, you know, even when we talk about the U.S. Senate, a couple of those seats were in Republican hands until the candidates said some knucklehead things and really got themselves in, embroiled in controversy and completely distracted away from the issue. So uh, I think it's going to have to be the president that blinks because it, it really is about spending. When you look at the exit polls, people are concerned about big government and big spending. President one on likability doesn't take away from the fact that people believe government is simply too big and we've got to rein it in. I disagree and I think ultimately at the end of the day this is a question of legacy for Obama. And he really can come in in his second term and say um, he attempted the bipartisan model in the first term that was consistently rejected by the Republicans. So he can come in and essentially say, I'm going to ramrod uh, my agenda down the throats of the Republican Party. I think for the Republicans, they have to think in terms of the next election. So, for example, in opposition to Susan Rice, does it look good for the party to make as one of its principal agendas uh, derailing the nomination of an African-American woman uh, as a replacement for Secretary of State. Does it make sense for them not to deal with the issue of, of these tax cuts in a way that makes sense to the American people who are looking for that kind of change? Where I do agree with Bill, and I think this is, is critical, is that the president does have this likability mandate. People do feel co confident in him yeah. as a person. He's got to translate that into concrete political action. Romney has made uh, several comments that, that sound like sour grapes, but let me throw one of them at yeah. you. He said that the president is not being a good friend to Israel. Uh, in the scenario we deal with now, yeah. do you agree with that? I actually, you heard when I was talking about this earlier, that, that I have to give the president credit where it's due. And he, I think he's handled the last few days in terms of this whole issue with Gaza uh, in a very good way, where he has come out publicly and reaffirmed his support for Israel, uh, said that uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is doing the right thing. Israel certainly has a right to defend itself. Uh, in that sense, I think Mitt Romney is wrong. I think the problem with any losing candidate, uh, that anything he says, even though if you drill down, maybe there's a, a nuance of what he said that might make sense. 
you know, you can't help but but look at him as sour grapes. So I think uh, he's got to take a page out of George W. Bush's book and take a step back and just be silent for the next few months and uh, and let this thing play out. Let me ask you guys one final question. What, do, what does each party do for the next four years to prepare for 2016? Uh, let me ask you on the Republican side first. The Republicans have to build on the successes of these governors that are out there that have been, electing, have been elected with overwhelming majorities. You've got folks like Susanna Martinez in New Mexico, Nikki Haley in South Carolina. These are strong female governors who were elected to lower taxes, create jobs, build businesses, and, and create that climate of economic prosperity. And they've got they to expand get their base. Front and center, but that's the way to do it. Got to do it on issues, and we've got the people that can be the front face of the party. Got to get them out there. You heard Question for the Democrats is, who are the rising stars within the party? And it's very important with a president like Obama, who's so per, uh, popular, who's so charismatic, to identify people who can translate that charisma into um, a democratic maintenance of the, of the presidency. Also very important for the Democrats to think in terms of not only Obama's legacy, but what's the charge going forward? So what are the long-term items they want to focus on as a party that will allow them to maintain the interest of the American people and the support of the American people? Bill Spidia, Yuhura Williams, thank you both much for coming you on. You bet. Appreciate it. Thanks.